bro. Uh -huh. Alright, so we may have an issue with Moo Man, um, Moody. Uh, so I noticed day before yesterday that Moody was limping and favoring his left front leg pretty good. And so I told Brooke about it. I went in there and I looked at him and I really couldn't see anything. And so it made me think maybe it's in his joint. Uh, I don't know if he stepped in the hole. I don't know if he sprained it. I don't know if he's got any swelling in there. I, I, I just don't know what's going on. We need, we would love to have a vet, a vet come out here, a veterinarian, a doctor come out here and uh, take a look at Moody and see if there's uh, anything going on there and what do we need to do next. So we're waiting on that phone call this morning to see if he can actually come out here. Now we've had we've had contacts before in the past, but we really haven't found someone that can be our go-to, come out here on a schedule, our go-to veterinarian. We just haven't had that person yet. So we're hoping this may be our person. Now, yesterday, because day four yesterday was when I saw Moody limping. Yesterday, it didn't seem he was limping quite as bad as he was the day before. But, we're going to see here in a minute. Here he comes. Yeah, he's still, I can see him. He's still favoring that left front, that left front leg. I can still tell, no, I can still tell that it's, it's bothering him just a little bit. So I want to be I want to be safe than sorry. So if uh, hopefully the vet calls, the veterinarian calls, and he can come out here today. Hey buddy, hey buddy, we gonna get you fixed up. See him favoring that left front just a little bit. It's a lot better than it was though. We gonna get you fixed up, buddy. We gonna get you fixed up, buddy. Yeah, yeah, we are. We gonna find out what's going on. Yeah. Now I actually looked at the hoof myself just for a second. I couldn't, I, I just saw him walking and I saw it and it looked kind of white. So I didn't really see anything there either. So hopefully everything's okay. Okay with Moo Daddy. Yeah. You gonna get some food this morning? I'm not gonna feed you all the way, okay? In case the, in case the doctor says he can come over here and I, I need to entice you with some food, okay? Yeah, yeah. We gonna get you fixed up, even if we have to load you up in the trailer. But hopefully, hopefully this doctor can come over here. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully he'll be your main doc. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing about living out in the middle of nowhere in rural Alabama. It's finding a go-to veterinarian. It kind of gets tough. It really does. And if he does come out here, then we got some other things that uh, we're going to get him to look at too. Mainly our goats. Good morning, Roomba. I see you and your two babies over there. Yeah. Let's get... Here comes the boss lady. I was wondering where you were at, girl. I was wondering where you were at. Dr. D. Yes, sir. That'll be perfect. Okay, so you're going to head this way now? Perfect. We'll see you in just a little bit. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Guess what? He's coming. He's coming. He's All right, so we're going to, uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this all works out for us. Well, I hope it's not a big deal is all I hope. I hope that it's not up in his joint or something that... Well, when I fed him this morning, he didn't seem to be limping near as bad as he was yesterday. Well, you know, 
yesterday afternoon I came over here and looked at him and even yesterday afternoon he seemed better but I still noticed the limp. I do think since we've got him coming on yeah that he needs to you know oh yeah definitely gonna check him out because um I mean we don't want anything to linger on and become right. a problem that we can't fix yeah and uh I'm a little worried because Moody is a gentle giant you got that right but That's he's but he's a giant the giant part is the exclamation point on exactly the that's what kind of worries me a little bit because moody could hurt us or hurt me or hurt him or hurt whoever just by accident that's he's right not even trying to to be mean or aggressive oh, or yeah, anything he's not that way but no, still he's, he's just, just so big he's just so big now i have already fed i only fed him half the amount that i normally give him i didn't feed him his whole amount even if that that's good but i, I know he's back there in the shade here comes topper topper and joe tonight look at the little top Little top gonna waddle on. Little munchkin legs. Did you got. notice this right here? Yeah, I noticed the duck sitting on you. Y'all see me eggs she's got under her. Oh my. Is that um topaz? Girl, I don't know. I don't know the duck names. You got quite a nest going. I am completely lost at duck names. You do have quite a nest going. I swear it looked like 30 eggs under her yesterday. I really don't think this was a good place to build a nest. Well, I'm gonna tell you actually it was underneath this thing here and moody has taken it upon itself to relocate and do a little rearranging in his house and that's exactly what we mean by giant yeah he's a giant he's sorry, a giant sorry girl you did have your yep and there's no sense of us buying hay right now well, because he's got all this lush grass to eat so and i'm gonna ask the doctor about that when he comes ask him about that and uh we're gonna go ahead and look moody over too while that's he's right. here and make that's sure everything's give him okay a full check up. i'm gonna ask him about feeding because another thing that i'm worried about is am i feeding him too much are you feeding him and enough? that's what's wrong with his leg yeah that's you right. know so i'm worried about that <laughs> Okay, number one, Dr. D is the bomb. <laughs> he is absolutely wonderful. Um, you can tell he loves animals. He talks to them like they're children. He tells them they're doing good. He's loving on them. So he's, he's really, really awesome. I, we didn't record that much because we didn't know him that well and we're just learning about him. And But after it was all said and done, he said he does not mind us recording, so the next time Dr. D comes around, we will record. Now, we'll get into everything that's happened. Uh, Moody's leg. Moody had an issue with his left front uh, leg, and luckily, it was something that he could fix right now. Moody had a piece of barbed wire stuck in his hoof, and you actually got it, don't you? I do. Look at this. At first, when he first pulled it out, I did not know what it was. And Dr. D said he thought that it was some sort of a piece of barbed wire. It, it looks like really old barbed wire. It's not anything we've put up. Right. It's something that's been here for a long time. You know, it kind of almost even looks like a clothespin. <laughs> it kind of you know, does, the, don't it? The, yeah. part, the spring part. Yeah. But that's not what it is because nobody's been hanging clothes over there in Moody's pasture. No. So... No, no that one. was stuck up in his hoof right there and it didn't go very far thank goodness yes he said that was a good thing yes because if it had gone in there far we would have an abscess to worry about and you know it don't look like that big of a deal but think about when you get a splinter you get a small like i'm working with the blackberries today and i got a small little bitty blackberry that's a teeny tiny centimeter and it'll worry the stew out of you so that's kind of like a splinter on moody right there a and, splinter times 10 i and guess and look he lifted moody's foot up like a horse yes moody stood there the whole entire time while his feet had the feed bucket and he just pulled it out y'all i'm here to tell you i'm glad yeah i'm really glad that jason and i didn't take it upon ourselves to lift his hoof up because had we done that and yeah. seen something stuck in there, yeah. we would have tried to take it out ourselves. Right. We wouldn't have done a good job. I, I don't think so now. He tried it when he first saw it. He tried to pull it out and Moody didn't like it. So it must have been sore. Now when he went to go get his uh, tool to get it out with, I actually saw how he did Moody's hoof 
and I pulled it up myself and Moody kind of let me hold it, but he didn't want you, he didn't want you touching this thing here. I don't understand how it's connected. I'm not quite, we may have to clean it up. It's got so much dirt and manure well, and all that stuff Well, you know what we could it. do? What's that? We can make a necklace out of it. <laughs> yeah, we make a necklace out of it. We might want to clean it up first. Though. Right. So he said that the hole wasn't very big, but to be on the safe side, he wanted to give Moody antibiotics because he didn't want his hoof to get abscessed. <gasps> Look. Uh-oh. It's two pieces. Yeah, bob bar is two pieces. It's two pieces and it's twisted around each other because huh. a bob bar has four points. Okay. And that's what that is. Well, I can have two necklaces. There you one go. for me and one for you. That's right. We can put a his and her symbol on it. <laughs> his and her Moody oh. necklace. But the hole was really small, so it gave him an antibiotic, which Moody absolutely did not like. So first of all, he loaded up the syringe with yep. the antibiotic, and he went over and he tried to give it to him. He said, okay, plan A is not going to work. Let's go to plan B. Yeah, Moody did not like it at all, so, so then, he just kind of jumped back. So then he decided that he was going to put the antibiotic in his food. Moody had been eating food all along to right. try to keep him, you know, keep his attention off what was right. going on. So we squirted the, I believe it was um, liquamycin. Is that what, what it was? was? Squirted that in his food. Dr. D said, I'm not sure how this tastes because I haven't ever had it. Right. So let's squirt it in his food and hopefully he'll just eat it. Put it in his food. No. No. I don't know what y'all did to this food, but I'm not fixing to eat it. He would look at it and turn his head sideways. He did not. He was not going to eat it. He was not going to eat it whatsoever. So that was plan B. Well, plan C had to come real quick. Yeah. So Dr. D, he's like a fast thinker. You Very know? fast thinker. I mean, you're not sitting over here, hmm, right. wondering what plan C right. is going to be. Kind of like back to square one. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So we take that bucket with the, with the antibiotic on it take that feed and dump it out put yep. some new in it real quick right. while he loads up a syringe again yep and decides to make a halter out of a rope yep puts it around moody's head and has complete control over his head but wants me to to hold the end of the rope right. jason to feed him while he right. gives him a shot yes this is plan three now yep. plan c and so we did that and uh you you can see what we did, happened. We, yeah brooke actually videoed this part and i did but I didn't video this part. That went during all this chaos. I could feel something crawling on my legs, and and I'm starting to move like this. Yeah. But I knew I couldn't stop because we had a 1,600 pound cow on a string that I had to hold. Yes. And lo and behold, I was standing in fire ants. And didn't even know it. Well, I knew it, but oh, yeah. I wasn't gonna tell anybody. Oh, okay. So he, uh, we we got him held back. Um, it was it, Moody's a big boy, really big boy, and extremely strong. But we did get him held uh, long enough where where the uh, dr d could get the syringe in him and well first of all he had the syringe in him and moody moved and it threw it off and, and then it, it stuck right there in the wood it stuck straight in the wood and then he got it back and then moody kind of had pulled himself over where he was up against the fence so one side of him was up against the fence so he really couldn't go anywhere at that point and so dr d gave him the antibiotic and 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 all that was successful mm -hmm. All right. I need that shot. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, buddy. Stay right there. Hey, buddy. It's like I don't like shots. Hey, buddy, you're good. But you got one. Good boy, Moody. Good boy. Now, let's go out here. It's all thick. We love you. We love you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. Very good. There you go. And then he started thinking, and he was like, I'm going to come up with an idea where we can actually control Moody safely, where he doesn't hurt himself and he doesn't hurt either me or you. Because the next time I come out here, you know, I want to be more prepared. He said, because first of all, when somebody calls and says they have a steer, <laughs> he said, I'm thinking a 500 pound steer that's not a pet. He said, I was not thinking it was going to be a 1600 pound pet steer. And he said, this is the biggest cow steer I've ever seen. Pet. He said, he's <laughs> huge. And uh, 
which he got tickled about him. But he also said that Moody was extremely tame. Oh, he and he loved him. And he could tell he was a pet. He said there is no aggression whatsoever in Moody. He just didn't want to, he just didn't like the shot. And he's just 1,600 pounds. And so when 1,600 pounds gets to moving, you know, us 150 pound folks get in his way and we're just like dominoes, you know, yeah. so all that was well and good. So he did get that in there. Now, here was the other good thing about Dr. D. He, first of all, he said he's gonna figure out how we can keep Moody under control the next time he has to come out here. And he's gonna start coming like on a schedule type thing. Also, he told me that he could trim Moody's hooves. And I said, well, Dr. D, how are you gonna do that and let's not be able to control him? He said, well, he said, if we get this thing built, and he said, I'm thinking just maybe a pole or two. He said, but I'm gonna figure it out and let you guys know. He said, well, once we get this thing built, we may be able to do it that way. He said, but I got two other options. I can give him a little bit of medicine and just relax him a little bit, and that he may just let us pick up his hooves and let me trim them. He said, because they're not bad. And he said, I'm probably going to have to come out here twice a year and just keep them in shape. He said, but if that doesn't work, our next plan is, is that I just have to sedate him and we'll lay him down on the ground and trim his hooves and then he'll get up and be fine. So that's the options there. And I'm so glad that he said that he could trim his hooves because that's a big deal. And I've been worried about that. Well, the thing is that Derek, our wonderful friend at the Flying Peach right. restaurant, who is a farrier, Correct. who did come out and look at Moody's hooves, does not have the ability to sedate Moody right if necessary to trim his hooves or a way to you know contain him yep. where Moody's comfortable enough to to have it done so having a veterinarian do it is yes that, it, that's the answer. that was a huge relief off my shoulders another huge relief off my shoulders is that I asked him I said look we're worried that we may be I'm getting all kind of answers and and comments and suggestions from a lot of cattle people telling me that I'm not feeding him enough, that he's feeding too much, I gotta do this. He said, he said, Jason, he said, Moody looks wonderful. He said, you don't wanna get him, he said, because he's a pet. You don't wanna get him super overweight because he's a pet. He's not going to the stockyard, he's not going to the process or anything like that. He said, he looks marvelous. That's complete opposite of what a cattle farmer would be after. Right. So that's why we asked the veterinarian. Yes. And, and like you said, he said he's in perfect He said condition. he looked wonderful. He said, keep on keeping what we're doing. Doing exactly what we're doing, though, for us not to change anything there. Now, you asked him about the hay because, you know, we've been thinking we got this green grass that we didn't need to have any hay, and he agreed with us on that aspect. He said, he said until the grass is gone, uh, keep on feeding him the grass. He said the that the, the grass right now, since we have plenty of it and it, it's still green and lush, yeah. to let the boys have the grass. Right. Now, when winter time comes, that's when we'll have to switch and make a make a change to hay because right. that'll be the only roughage that they have. But right now, we're doing the right thing by letting them have the grass. And he said, just save your pennies on that hay until it's needed. Yes. So that that was just a huge huge relief that now we got somebody who acted like he enjoyed coming over here for he one did. He, he really did. did i could tell he loved the animals while he was here we got him to check the goats and he, he took some poo with him and he's gonna do a fecal uh check for worms because he told us he really doesn't like going by how do you what do you call it the famacha score the famacha score where you look at their eyelids or their, their gums eyelids. he said you can do that but it's not it's not a hundred percent it'll give you an idea yeah but don't he he suggested being on a schedule yes that's... versus going by a famacha score he said if you got somebody that doesn't feel good and you're in between wormings yeah check that famacha score right. see what they're looking like give you an idea of maybe something's going on well it can it can tell you when something's bad yes wrong. exactly because if it's white because you super know they're light anemic. pink yeah then you're in trouble that means go ahead and get some help now right but ours are always pink they're always, always pink, pink and red but yeah we always worm yes but we found out today we're using the wrong kind of wormer yeah he, he seems to think that the wormer we're using for our area is um it's, it's probably working but not working as good as it should be so he gave us some suggestions and actually sold us some wormer mm -hmm. today and um 
And he's not the kind of vet that was just out to make a buck. That no, was not his intention. He wasn't. He was just told us what wormer to get. And I asked and him. And you if asked he had him, any. did he have it? And he, you would rather buy it from him than us having to go to the store and get it. That's right. And the the, the two things that he told us was is sidectin. Yeah, sidectin. And then um, he wants us to use safeguard for those worms that the other two wormers don't kill. And the first wormer was mm, called, mm. you got it in your pocket? I got it in my phone. Oh. I took a picture I of it. I got you. And um, it is called. Start with an L. L-E-V-A-M-I-S-O-L-E. Levasimol, that's what I'm guessing. And it's um, it, it's a powder that you mix with water, yeah. and then you you know you put it in their mouth. Right. But um, that powder's gonna it's gonna vaccinate like 200 head of. It's goat. concentrated. So we don't have that many right head to vaccinate for. But what we had been using was just alternating between valbazin and Safeguard. Yeah. Which, to our unknown knowledge, kills a specific worm that these don't. However, doesn't kill some worms. Some worms. That are there. So that's why he doses them with that and Sidectin mm -hmm. and Safeguard. At the same time. Kind of at the same time. It's and alternating in a in a three, three day. day interval. Well, you give it, you skip two days, you give it, you skip two days, and you give it again. Yeah, right. So a total of three doses over six days. Right. Um, we did not get the fecal back. Yet. Not yet. He's going to let us know this evening. He's going to let us know yeah. this evening. But with us doing those worming regimens that we mentioned, yeah. we feel pretty sure we're going to need to worm everybody. Yeah, we, we but, think um, so. We hadn't had any problems, but no. while he was here, we felt comfortable having him check um, check some of ours and just see what their fecal score is. Yep. But what works for us in our area may not may necessarily not work, work yeah, for you. Yeah, because this, is, this so, is in central Alabama. I advise your county extension office would be a good place to start, Yeah, I would think. I bet they'll have some more information about your area and the type of worms that you need to be treating. That's right. I agree. For whether it be cattle or, I mean, he still suggested ivermectin for Moody and Mildred. Yeah, he said there's ivermectin still the best for the cows and for peaches. Yes, ivermectin, which is a pour on for the cows because it's so easy to just pour it down their yeah. back. And then peaches, what we normally do is squirt hers on a piece of bread or something that we know it's on. Mm -hmm. And she just eats it. Yep. And it works. It works. Oh, y'all don't know what a relief this is for him to come out here for one and to say that he will continue to come out here as needed but another thing that he did do is he said hey look y'all are in the middle of nowhere y'all are in super rural area there may be a day that i can't come out here and he said about 90 percent of the time i can tell you what to do over the phone if you have the correct medication if you have the correct medication so he's going to build us a medicine cabinet with the, with the medication he thinks we need for emergencies. Not like build it out of wood. No, 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 no. Build it using the medicines right. a little frequent. He's going to get us the medicines we need for emergencies. And that way we'll have it on hand here in case we do have an emergency. Which luckily, knock on wood, we haven't had. No. The sad news is, Nugget, about Dr. D is, is he said he don't like emus. He no. said everyone that he's dealt with has been super mean and aggressive. And we said, well... You haven't met Nuggets yet. So maybe he'll change his mind when he starts coming over here from time to time. And maybe I can get him just a love on you some. You think that will happen? Maybe that'll happen. Like yeah. I said, he's looking in the sky for some answers. <laughs> he does not understand how Dr. D can not oh. like an emu. Look at that face. Oh, he said the last one he tried, the last one he messed with, tried to kill him. Yeah. So. <laughs> I guess that would be reason enough. <laughs> I think Nugget likes Joe. I think Nugget enjoys Joe's company. Don't you remember at the old farm? Oh, Nugget would go over to Joe. He would. He would right. stand there the entire time. I forgot about that. But I never knew that Joe was actually in love with him. Nugget likes Joe. I forgot that Nugget used to hang out over there a lot. Oh, yes. Oh, we. You sweet man. In the mouth. Joe's crazy, though. That's why we call him but Crazy Nugget Joe. But Nugget puts up with him. Look at him. Yeah. I wonder Nugget don't pick him. It is. I'm telling you. That's how I know Nugget likes him. Well, I don't know. Because Nugget picks me and I think he likes me. <laughs> See how Moo Man's doing. 
How about you, buddy? What you doing, buddy? How you feeling, buddy? Let me see you walk. Let me see you strut, Moody. He ain't gonna strut for me, is he? We're gonna cut the fence off, man, and see what we got. Here he comes. Y'all look like he's walking better, don't y'all think? Yeah, he may be favoring just a little bit, but I know he feels better. I know you feel better, buddy. Yeah, I know you feel way better. I know you do. Had a darn old tack in your foot. Or a piece of old barbed wire. I ain't in the world. Hey, there's a, there's a, a our, our perimeter is fenced, but it's old fencing and it's down in places. And that's why we, you know, we put that electric netting around there. And, um, so there ain't no telling y'all. But the good thing is, is Dr. D got you fixed up, didn't he? Yeah, and he said he can even do you. He can even give you a petty. Yeah, a little pedicure. I'm gonna ask him, can he paint your toenails if, when he comes and do them? What do you think? No, okay. Well, no painted toenails. No French manicure for Moody. <laughs> no French manicure for Moody. Well, buddy, I sure am glad you are fixed up. Yeah, I sure am glad you are fixed up. I know you feel better, brother. Yeah, and I'm glad I noticed it right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad Dr. D came on over here. Yes, I am. Yeah, and Dr. D said he's gonna be your doctor from now on. How about that? Yeah. He said, you definitely are a gentle giant. There ain't no doubt about it. <laughs> I can feel where he gave him the shot right there. Maybe sore. I'm not gonna rub on that part. We're gonna rub down here. Yeah, Dr. D said you was a gentle giant. Yes, he did. He did. <laughs> I got tickled at him when he said that when he gets a call on the steer, he's thinking about a 600 pound steer that's going to market. He said, I wasn't thinking about a 1,600 pound pet steer. <laughs> he said, I ain't never had one of those yet. <laughs> oh my gracious. Oh my gracious. Yeah. All right, Big Daddy. I'm so glad you feel better. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do, buddy. Gotta take care of my moon man. That's right. That's right. Miss Lewis and one of her chicks is sitting on the top of the old lean-to next to the barn. And her other little chick is down here. Oh, she got down. I guess she figured out that that little one, wow, the little yellow one couldn't get up there. So they're going to go find them another place to roost. How awesome is that? Woof, <laughs> woof,